Right, so I'm here today with uh, Walter from EV Enhanced and we're just going to be talking a bit about um, the new uh, firmware upgrade from Nissan and uh, just a bit about the sort of the um, everything that's happened uh, with the flip the fleet research into the Nissan Leaf uh, 30 watt uh, 30 kilowatt uh, battery degradation uh, that was announced in March and then just with this Nissan fix uh, what's involved and sort of a bit more about that subject um, so I guess to roll it back, uh, in March, uh, Flip the Fleet announced that um, they'd been doing sort of studies on leafs around the country, and they found they were finding that of all the leafs, the 30 kilowatt hour ones were ha having a battery degradation at um, three times uh, higher than what they were seeing on the uh, 24 kilowatt and also the Gen 1 leafs. Is that pretty much the story? Yeah, essentially. Uh, so they, all of their data was collected uh, through members of the public uh, who were submitting information on a monthly basis uh, that was uh, basically taking information from the car's battery management Yeah, computer. and this is from Le for a leaf spy for the most part. Yes. Right. Um, so there is, um, yeah, it is collected with leaf spy, but uh, information on the state of health, for example, is exactly the same in leaf spy as what... Uh, Nissan's uh, genuine tools uh, would display, um, and that, that number is calculated in the battery management computer. Right. It's not something that Leaf Spy is calculating. It's uh, it's just basically displaying a value that's that's been calculated. Yeah, and what we are seeing is you're just seeing the state of health sort of gradually decline at a much faster rate at the 30 uh, kilowatt ones. Yeah, the. Even before the flip the fleet uh, guys shared their data with me, I was I was starting to see a, a problem occurring as well. Um, there were um, yeah basically a, a large number of thirty kilowatt hour cars around the country that were dropping uh, state of health um, much faster than what would normally be expected, and starting to drop um, bars on the on the dashboard right. um, and. And customers were starting to get unha unhappy with them um, in, in cases with dealers that they'd bought the car from. So there were already cracks starting to appear uh, already before I got involved with the fleet. Right. Um, and then just seeing their data on a on a lot larger scale than what I had been seeing um, really confirmed the same things that I had observed. Cool. So it just basically became a bit clearer that so it's not just a sort of you know three or four cars, but it's actually more of a systemic um, problem. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I mean, I guess I, I should probably ask you, um, your company EV Enhance. Could you just give me a sort of bit of an idea about what you guys do? Uh, well, the general idea uh, behind EVs Enhanced is uh, as technology is moving on, EVs uh, are getting uh, better and better every year. Uh, but there's well, little to no incentive for manufacturers to go back and apply the better technology to cars that they previously sold. Um, some manufacturers have been better than others on that. Um, mm. For example, the, the Zoe's and i3's uh, have, have the option of, of getting a newer generation battery than they were originally sold with. Um, but uh, Nissan, for example, which is obviously a... Um, uh, the by far the biggest um, uh, proportion of, of our EV fleet here in New Zealand um, has shown very little interest in in uh, upgrading uh, cars that have been sold previously, mm. or even restoring them back to um, as new condition with uh, with a replacement battery. Right. Uh, so. I don't like the idea of a of a car that's uh, really well put together and has a lot of life in it. Um, you know, eventually not having a solution when when the battery needs replacement. Right. So you're sort of pretty much trying to fill in that gap of you know what customers need from the vehicle versus what is actually available from the manufacturer. Yeah, but basically trying to make the cars cool. as good as they can be for their owners. Yeah. So um, I guess so. Basically, Flip the Fleet uh, announced uh, this whole uh, report uh, with all the data showing this degradation. Uh, there was a bit of silence for a while, um, but then more recently Nissan has brought out a uh, firmware update that's, uh, supposed, that's supposed to fix the issue. And um, basically the firmware update, uh, you explained to me previously that what it does is it just sort of uh, resets how it measures the battery performance. Um, so maybe just tell us, tell us a bit about that and um, then we can sort of go on to a bit more about the firmware update. 
Okay, uh, so with this update, it doesn't just in indicate that the battery is better. It, uh, it also, its whole calculation for the amount of energy that's being stored and the state of charge um, is also altered. So is that also in terms of like telling the battery when it's full or when it's flat? Yeah, so the, yeah, ba basically a, lo a lot of the cars previously were telling their owners that the car was nearly flat and needed to be charged and that they couldn't go much further uh, when that wasn't in reality the case. Mm -hmm. So nothing has changed about the, the battery itself in terms of what it can store. Um, obviously it's the same battery inside but uh, we're finding that with this update uh, it's getting, giving a more accurate picture of the, the true energy in the battery and, and the health of the battery right. uh, and people are actually being able to drive a lot further before the car is telling them that they need to stop. Right, so basically the entire sort of problem that was we found from the Flip the Freak data was a software issue. Uh, yeah, essentially. I mean, there are cars out there that... Um, there are still cars that, that are degrading, but it's not an across-the-board thing. Yeah, across the board, I would say uh, the majority of it is uh, is completely down to the, right. the a, a bug in the firmware, effectively. Okay, cool. Um, so, I guess, going on to this update, uh, what's involved in uh, getting the update? Let, let's say you're an owner of a 30 kilowatt uh, leaf. Uh, do you go along to Nissan, or um, do we come to you, or what's the sort of situation and when you can get where you can get that from? So at at this stage, uh, Nissan New Zealand uh, is not offering the update uh, to any any owners here in New Zealand. Um, there, it was looking more ho hopeful that that would be happening quite soon. Mm. Um, it's looking less hopeful at the moment. Um, which is is a bit unfortunate. We're, we're kind of a little bit caught in a uh, in a larger problem, and that's uh, part and, of the import issue. And that's the whole when, import yeah, issue, and them right. not wanting to take uh, responsibility or set a precedent for um, looking after grey imports. Right. So um, yeah, yeah, that, we're, we're kind of caught in the, that fallout. Right. All right. Okay, so um, can't go to Nissan. Um, so you are are you offering the update currently, or are you looking at offering the update to people that want to pay for that to be done? Um, I I am offering the update on a bit of a limited basis. Yeah. Um, it's not uh, particularly fast to do, so it's quite limited in the number of cars that uh, that I could get through. Um, Again, yeah, having a, a network like Nissan's network mm. would, would make it so much easier for, for people to have access to that. Uh, but at the moment, it pretty much involves me getting to the car or, or right. vice versa. Um, and there's a lot of cars spread out all over the and country. There is, and, yeah. Um, so yeah. I, guess, I guess the other question <clears throat> from that would be, um, are you able to um, sort of train up other technicians to do this? Or are there other parties that are wanting to come to the table and sort of... Of helping yeah, around that, that, that's something we're looking at at the right. moment. Yeah. Um, there's a reasonable investment to, to set anyone up to be able to do it, and um, that's that's something that uh, needs to be done if Nissan's not going to step up. Yeah. Um, and but it would be yeah. Also, wouldn't be a great move if uh, we don't really want to be competing directly against Nissan. With yeah, and you don't want to sort of put all this offering. time and investment into you know having this ability to do it if Nissan then turn around and be like, oh, we're actually just going to do it for free or, you know, whatever. And then you're having that direct... Yeah, well, we'd, we'd be quite happy if Nissan op offered yeah. it to everyone for yeah. free, but... Um, but you don't want to sort of go down this pathway. No, no, of, yeah. no. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Um, and I mean, I guess the, my other question would be, um, you know, what happens if you don't apply this update? So you said that there's not really anything wrong with the battery. It's just a firmware thing. Can you just sort of decouple your anxiety and sort of just drive it past zero and it'll still work fine or not really because right. you don't you don't know ex you, you really don't know where you are in that lower range right uh, even using tools like uh, leaf spy um, there's there's basically like a dead band where nothing is changing you really yep. have no uh, no real indication where you are other than the than the battery voltage right um, of all the cells but that's um, that's getting uh, into a, quite a non-linear area there, right? Um, and so it's not entirely yeah. obvious. So basically, the update lets you tap into the capacity of the battery that you can't nor or get at the moment because of the way that the software is coded. So, in getting this update, you are able to access that bottom sort of ten or twenty percent of the battery. Yeah, effectively. Yeah, and also as time goes on, I guess that 
is going to that reserve, kind of, so to speak, is going to increase because of the way that the battery software is continuing to measure that degradation. Yeah, well, I think with the older version, people are losing um, the the cars capa uh, calculating that it's losing range uh, really quickly. Right. Uh, so the problem is getting getting worse. Yeah. Um, yeah, very quickly. Whereas, and whereas it, it shouldn't do that with the with the update. Right. And I, I guess the other question would be, um, it doesn't seem like there's any sort of urge and like it doesn't matter when you apply the update. Like you know, when you do eventually get around to applying the update, it's going to fix yes. the problem and it's going to go up to normal. Yeah, so, I think I think most people with the knowledge of that the update is out there and they can get it at some point. Yeah. Um, that you know, it's unlikely that it's going to stop them getting to work uh, yeah. tomorrow. So. Uh, I, I think for for people that already own the cars, there's probably not a huge urgency to have it done. Right. Um, probably more for the car dealers, there is that urgency because it's harder to sell, to sell a car right. that uh, that doesn't have the. Up and are there any risks involved in applying the update? Yeah, I think when when you're firmware updating any module in the car, so right. so this update is only uh, updating one particular module in the car of, yep. of many. Um, but when you're updating any of those, uh, any any of the modules, there uh, there is a risk. Right. Um, so the the absolute worst case scenario would be that the uh, battery control module uh, effectively gets bricked during the update, and uh, the, in that scenario, if it wasn't recoverable in place, then we would have to drop the battery pack and physically uh, swap the battery control module right. for another one. Yeah. Um, we, and we do have a, a spare 30 kilowatt hour uh, battery control module that's already had the update. Yep. Um, so that's that's kind of our contingency that's plan, contingency, which, right. which uh, fortunately we haven't um, had to use yet. Yep. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, especially as if, if I ended up doing a, a large number, I I wouldn't. Uh, I think as the numbers grow, obviously there's a risk that you are going to hit that one that just. Um, was really unlucky and didn't didn't behave itself. Yeah, yeah. So how many have you done so far, and how long have, have you? How long has this sort of fix been out for that you've been applying it to cars? Uh, so we've had the update for maybe three or four weeks now. Yeah. Um, initially, we uh, upgraded five uh, five cars that were ones that were basically in our own fleet that we could observe, and. Um, at the start, I didn't know whether the update was was uh, a legitimate fix or, or possibly something uh, deceptive that Nissan was doing to to uh, make the situation look better than it was. Mm -hmm. um, and then after approximately two weeks of testing, we decided that it that it was a legitimate fix that it, it matched up. Uh, it's not like every car is always going to report per perfectly accurately, mm -hmm. um, but generally speaking. Uh, all the cars with the old firmware w were were showing uh, significant signs of underreporting, and right. with with the update date, most of them are, are quite close. Um, so yeah, after after deciding that it was a good thing, uh, then we've we were initially holding off uh, waiting for Nissan because uh, at the time it was looking very promising that they'd be rolling out the update uh, quite shortly through their dealer network. Mm. In which case there was no need to, for us to go further, um, but then they appear to have kind Could of run, run, run into uh, legal reasons why yeah. why they're they're uh, perhaps not going to do that. Mm. Right, and so so you've just done the five tests of cars so far. Uh, no, we have done some others right. for some okay. of our partners now. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I think they're kind of at the most most risk uh, with with uh, especially if they're holding onto a lot of stock. Yeah. So that, that's that would definitely be the the place where we'd be uh, right. starting. Is there is there any way for um, someone to see if a thirty kilowatt hour leaf has had the fit upgrade? Yes. Applied? What's the easiest way to do uh, that? So you would need Lease Spy Pro, not yep. not the free version. Um, within Lease Spy Pro, you can go into the settings uh, screen, and there's a little box in there that you tick uh, called Service Screen. Um, or actually, it's a tick on the Android version, or a little slider on the on the uh, Apple version, mm -hmm. uh, and that gives you a, a an extra screen in in Lease Spy, yep. uh, which is called your service screen, and within that there's a read ECUs option. Uh, if you click on that option, and then you've actually got to press a read ECUs button again yep. to actually make it do its thing, uh, then it'll read the firmware versions of all of the modules that you've got in the car, right, um, or or a majority of them anyway, not not quite all of them, yeah. 
Uh, and the lithium battery controller, as Nissan officially calls it, in leased by is uh, called HV battery. Uh, so next to HV battery, you'll have a code. Yep. Um, and that code, effectively, if it's uh, if that ends in a 4A or a 4B, then that is a car that needs to be upgraded. Okay. Um, so you don't want 4A, <laughs> you don't want 4B. Yeah, 4C, 4C is 4C a car is the car that's one. been upgraded. Great. So if you are in Christchurch or uh, Walter's coming uh, to a place near you, which possibly might be happening, that's why we need more EVs, uh, then you can get in touch with Walter for EV Enhanced, uh, and otherwise we will wait uh, to see uh, if anything else rolls out as well. So thank you very much for your time.